Good morning, Warriors. I'm Bailey Pete in the seat. And I'm William Cron. And, and this, this is DCTV DC with your morning, morning announcements. announcements. That spring break was so great, William. I needed that. How about you? You're right, Bailey. I didn't even realize how badly I needed the extra time off. Well, I hope you're feeling refreshed because we are only seven weeks away from the end of this crazy school year. For many of you, last week was a real challenge. Every DC student from kindergarten to 10th grade was participating in the state standardized testing, both Thursday and Friday. This is not the end of the testing schedule, Warriors. As we look ahead to April, there are a few more testing days to remember. If you're testing, there is no exception for late arrivals or early dismissals. Make sure you get good rest and eat a good breakfast and happy testing. So that means juniors and seniors who do not have testing should report to school at 10:15 on these days, basically a two-hour delay. Sophomores, you will begin your American History State testing Tuesday, April 13th or Wednesday, April 14th. It will take place during your history block period. Doesn't that test take like 90 minutes to complete? And that's only the first part, isn't it? You are so right, William. It has been known to be pretty intense, and yes, there will be the second part of the American History Test the following week during the same block period. If you thought the testing ended there, well, sorry, but you'd be wrong. Grades 5 through 10 will be partaking in the OST science portion on both Thursday and Friday, April 15th and 16th. Follow the same rules as last week's attendance policies. Do not get too comfortable yet, though. That's right, because the OST math portion is taking place on the following Thursday and Friday, April 22nd and 23rd. I guess it's a good thing we have a four-day weekend. Why is that, William? Because this weekend we are celebrating Easter, which is the resurrection of our Jesus Christ. Now, here's Luke in the halls talking to students about Easter. Thanks, William. Hi, this is Luke McCarty, and I'm out in the halls of D.C. asking you, the students, some questions about Easter. Let's go. Get this on camera. Rolling, get rolling, get rolling. Would anyone want to do an interview for media broadcasting about Easter? I would, but I have to do an interview later, so... Maybe the video is just me failing to try and get interviews. So, when it comes to Easter, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? A bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Good one. Eggs. <laughs> Jesus, I guess. Jesus is love. Easter eggs. Jesus, obviously. The celebration of the resurrection of Christ. Bunnies. <laughs> uh, Easter eggs. So what is your favorite Easter time candy? You know those like weird eggs that are chocolate and they have like the heart on the outside? The robin eggs? Yes, those are my favorite. Oh, the Reese's eggs. The best. Good stuff. Cadbury cream eggs. <laughs> that's a good one too. That's, that's good stuff right there. Starburst jelly beans. Reese eggs. Peeps. The little bunnies. I forget what they're called. The, uh, Peeps? Peeps. Yeah, yeah, maybe those. Yeah. We're going into the library. Is he dead on the ground? <sighs> Is he actually asleep? Yeah. He's awake. I won't bother him. So around Easter, what is your favorite tradition to do? Uh, my family likes to eat ham and mashed potatoes and then hunt for Easter eggs. Um, go to church and eat brunch with my family. Easter egg hunt. We all go to my Nana's house and we uh, have an Easter egg hunt. Easter egg hunt. No brainer. Me and my mom always cook like a ham and have a bunch of family over. Yeah, we just like have a family dinner. Like, you know, bonding time. Nice. Gotta love bonding time. So those were your answers for a couple of these Easter questions. This has been Luke McCarty in the halls. Back to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Luke, for that insight about Easter. If you're staring down the end of the school year with no service hours on your record, then listen up. We have an opportunity that could fulfill a good portion of hours you still may need. DC needs students volunteers for a men's conference being held at First Baptist Church of Kettering on April 30th and May 1st. Student volunteers will help with setup and tear down, and you can volunteer for part or all of the event. If you guys are interested, please contact Mrs. Hendricks. Bailey, what other service opportunities for student athletes are there? The Athletic Boosters will be holding a golf outing on Monday, May 10th. Volunteers are needed, and you can sign up in the high school office for a time slot. Hey seniors, listen to this very important message from William. Graduation gown distribution will be April 6th during lunch in the cafeteria. Bailey, what's going on with spring sports? After all spring sports getting canceled due to COVID-19 last year, this season just feels important. And who better to tell all about our Warrior athletes? Here's Liv Live Dabble and Evan Brown with this week's sports event. Thanks, Bailey. 
What a week back, Warriors. We had a lot happening in sports last week, so let's recap. The varsity tennis team kicked off their spring sports season on Friday afternoon with their win over Fairborn. They also defeated Waynesville Monday night and Yellow Springs on Tuesday night. Saturday was a big day for DC sports. First, the varsity track team had their first meet of the season and the girls placed 4th out of 12 teams. The boys placed 6th out of 14 teams. The girls softball team had their first game of the season where they fell to Twin Valley South. They got their first victory of the season Tuesday night against Trotwood, who they beat 26 to 16. And finally, the boys varsity baseball team had a doubleheader Saturday morning at their home field. They defeated National Trail 8 to 0, where junior Naaman Anderkin threw a complete game no hitter. In their second game against Cedarville, the Warriors built an early lead and hung on to defeat the Indians 11 to 10. Our baseball team also defeated Miami Valley Academy 12 to 4 Monday night and defeated Wayne High School 8 to 5 on Tuesday night to keep their four-game winning streak alive. Good job this week, Warriors. We have a full week of sports this week, starting with the varsity tennis team's match today, Thursday, April 1st, at Brookville High School at 4.30. Finally, the girls' varsity softball team will be playing away at Seven Hills today at 5 o'clock. In honor of junior Naaman Anderkin's no-hitter on Saturday, Evan did an interview with him after the game, so let's go to the field. I'm here with first baseman and pitcher Naaman Anderkin, who threw a no hitter today. Naaman, what does it feel like to throw a no hitter? Um, it was a lot of fun. I was really pumped up. I had a lot of nervous energy going on this morning, but uh, came out here with my boys and we got it done the first and second game today. How does it feel to throw an entire game, oh, pitch an entire game, <laughs> and then go out and play first base for another game? Oh man, you're, you're tired. I got the option if I wanted to go out or not, but um, the free game monster had me going, so I decided to go out there and play both today. Alright, so everyone's wondering when the next step is. When is the perfect game coming? Perfect game. The perfect games are hard, man. That's no walks. My control is a little iffy today. Um, perfect games, that would be fun though, but uh, you know, we'll try next time. So we're here next game though, right? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah next yeah. game. Perfect. All right, thanks, David. <laughs> Good job, buddy. This has been Evan Brown reporting from Honaker Field. Back to the studio. Thanks, Evan. Seems like we had a really eventful week for our spring sports. Well, guys, that's all we have today for your morning announcements. See, See ya. Bye. Yay, Bailey, you're a pro at this. Thank you.